wanted you to know that it's not that I've taken elementary education just because I happen to like it. It's not that, because I don't see how you can impact anything else other than elementary education. Yes. You know? And we're, we're in luck there. Because if you're an elementary education teacher, uh, nobody really cares what you're doing inside the classroom, because they think that you're really sick. Okay. So you have enormous liberty, much more than any college teacher, any high school teacher does. Uh, as long as, uh, I guess most governments, I don't know about the US, they have these tests with which they test the quality of your product. Uh, so I uh, deal with a lot of schools in England, in the poorer areas of uh, England. One of the ways I found of, uh, uh, of dealing with this problem is that you tell the eight and nine year olds what those tests are and you tell them that, look guys, if you can do well in that test, then I get to do a lot of fun stuff from here. Okay, you have endless them. And then you have to tell them every cheating method for getting yes. good score. <laughs> we sit together, we sit together and we huddle together and we say, that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> Let's just get on with it. Okay, times, tables, no problem. <laughs> so, so, you have to set up your, your group that way. And then you have to experiment. Fortunately, the 8 to 12 year olds, they love the word experiment. So I've got this whole lot to say, you know, we're going to, do you want to try an experiment? Yes, so we want to try this experiment. And then at the end of it, one lot once said, did you get enough evidence? So I said, yeah, I think I got enough evidence. <laughs> so, so, you know, they'll, they'll cooperate with you, provided you do the one thing that for some reason society doesn't let us do. If you, if you discuss your adult problems with them at their terms and seek their help in solving them. Yes. Yes. If you do that for a couple of years, you would have changed that generation. Okay. It's, it then becomes uh, possible for the tertiary educators to start taking it forward. But until you do that, you can't even start. You take a bunch of 16 or 17 year olds and you tell them, Okay, guys, we're going to do something in a different way. They say, do we have to do it that way? <laughs> I'd like you to find out things for yourself. They'd say, why don't you tell us? Okay. Because they, they have been intellectually killed by them already. So what I'm saying is, we've got to take, get this one lot out of there, uh, free them, and then by the time they're 16, you can that's the sort of general approach I'm taking as an action point. And your setup, the democratic school, has everything in it kind of ready to take on a thing like that. Because you are saying that it's the learner who will set the agenda. Um, but I would add to that that if I was doing it, then I, I would of course say set the agenda. But I would also say, once they have set the agenda, then I would say, why is the agenda the way it is? Uh, kids, particularly six, seven year olds, like the tertiary wise. So they'll, they'll think about it and they'll give you some answer because this was cool and that was bad and this and that. And then you say, but why was that one good and that one bad? And then you push them and you push them and you push them. And then you suddenly find to your utter amazement, you hit the official curriculum. The, the official curriculum? You hit the official curriculum somewhere along that line. If you keep asking the why, the why, the why. So, give you just one example before we get into discussion. I was in an Australian school, and uh, then uh, I, I just wanted to do something with the kids. They were 10, 12 year olds. So, so we started off this discussion about what happens to a batch of uh, water lying on the floor. So, so what do you mean what happens? I said, yeah, I mean, if it's just lying on the floor, then what happens? So it dries up. So I said, and if I pour some more water, it will dry up again. And where, what happens then? Where does all that water go? Well, it goes up into the air, and then, and then more goes up into the air, and then, and then still more goes up into the air, and then, and then it all comes down. <laughs> so this teacher who's listening to me, he said, I can't believe it. He just got them to do the water cycle by asking only one question, what then? <laughs> so, or then what? You know, so, uh, so they love that. You know, and five-year-olds often do that with you. 
they say, why did this happen? And then they say, uh, well, good example again. I, in a wedding uh, reception, once I see something and there's this kid next to me. So this guy says, um, we're eating rice. So this guy says, what will happen if I pour some water into your rice? So I said, it'll get cold. <laughs> so we eat for a while. Imagine being a, what will happen if I pour some hot water on your rice? <laughs> At which point, of course, I said, shut up. <laughs> so, but, but you know what I mean, the way they, they, they tease that. Well, reverse that and put it back to them. If you do that, it's a, it's a lovely, simple way, given the internet, of, of uh, allowing them to go almost anywhere. So that's basically what I'm doing right now. And uh, what we describe as a self-organized learning environment. And what I'm trying to see is, can I make it run in an autopilot mode? It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a bit of a pipe dream, really. I mean, is it possible to have something which looks like a spaceship, which is meant for children, and has nobody other than children inside it? Is it sustainable to have that, and is it possible to do it? I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm trying in various different ways. Uh, it's not entirely true that there is no adult present, but the adult is present actually over Skype and not physically. So uh, that has its uh, very good advantages. Children love elderly looking people on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> they just love them. And, uh, and, and they, uh, of course, are diplomatic. So if you ask them why do you love them, they say because she is so nice and she is so great.